So Nina, Eleanor, caught between these two brothers, very much the kind of sort of the rose between these two thorns. Just, um, you know, obviously it's kind of a, a bizarre love triangle in a way, but just um, tell us kind of the emotions and, and the feelings that she's kind of going through as a, as a character and the predicament that she's in. Well, Elena at first meets Stefan and, and she can't explain what it is exactly that, that draws her to him, but there's something mysterious and interesting and they have this connection and this bond and they're drawn to each other. They just can't help it. She later finds out that he's a vampire, which complicates the situation, and that he has a brother who's also a blood-sucking killer. And so her life just keeps getting more and more complicated day by day. Everyone around her dro starts dropping like flies. But for some reason, she's still in love with him. Like they, they still don't know why. <laughs> How she, but, what do you mean? <laughs> Come on. She doesn't know why. Uh, I, don't I don't know why. Elena yet. may know why. I am just trying to figure it out. I, to be honest, wouldn't put up with. Yeah. <laughs> don't you see how much I love you? Don't you see how much I love you? Doesn't that count for Maybe something? Maybe that's why. Maybe she, the love, it, she's blinded by the love. Of course. There you go. That's what it seems to always be. But uh, but there there are different <laughs> qualities in each of these two boys that that attracts her. I mean. Uh, Stefan is committed and loving and he will do anything for her and protect her and Damon is kind of not so serious and try, always has fun and he's like the comic relief in some ways so between the two of them they basically make the perfect guy so she's in the perfect situation she's right in between the both what's the guy's name if 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 if, if, if oh, the girl the guy the one that you would choose if it was me deciding between the two of them i would choose the other brother Deffen, who's basically the, the combination of them both the amalgamation of their, there their best parts du hast verloren als du aufgehört hast dich von menschen zu ernähren Greif mich besser nie wieder an. In terms of the actual themes you've touched upon there, you know, in terms of obviously romance, vampire escapes and everything else, what do you think it is that, you know, this particular kind of genre, especially both in drama, both on TV and film, is so appealing or has been so appealing in the last four or five years? Because the kind of vampire-esque genre has just exploded massively both in print, on TV, on film. Great. Where do you think that appeal lies? It's a great platform for storytelling uh, in an interesting sort of setting. Um, and also, you know, uh, it's a great way to tell a, a story of a young young adult story um, with uh, such odd and extreme circumstances. Uh, and the vampire is a, a symbolic of the, the rebel, the outsider, the outcast, uh, the recluse. Um, yet the one that's uh, the rebel who's still appealing, the bad boy that you sort of want to get close to, but you, you, you are kind of afraid of, and um, represents a lot of people can sort of relate to that, uh, male and female alike, and uh, uh, so I think that's sort of the, for, you know, for, I think a, a good platform. I don't think that's a great way to explain it. I mean, you know, there there are there are many many. There are many avenues to, you know, essentially you have these characters which we're all, you know, human beings just in general are attracted to things that are, that are dangerous and, and scary but yet sexy and mysterious at the same time. But just like Paul said, it is such a basis for great storytelling. I mean, there, there, and, and it's, there's so much symbolism and parallels to, to human life. Well, yeah. they're, they're humans with heightened... Well, uh, heightened abilities and feelings. I mean, everything is between their se all their senses are heightened. Yeah, I mean, everything imagine. that we smell, they can smell it a hundred times stronger, and and the touch and and you know, it's like the blood. It's like that could represent a million other things and different addictions in in our daily life. Yeah. You know, and so um, people watch it and even subconsciously have metaphorical, you know, sort of interesting sort of archetypal, you know, yeah, you yeah. know, rebel rebel. Just plucking um, a word from the from the title, there, diaries. Did either of you or any of you keep diaries when you were, were younger, and if so, why? And and just just um, you know, just taking that out of there. It just um, did. I, 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 more like a journal. <coughs> when I was younger, when I started working. Isn't a journal basically like a? It is. It is a diary. It just I never started with dear diary. 
Um, dear self, dear self, it was a good day. <laughs> but going back and looking at, it, I mean, I have the the entries that go back as to far as like, uh, you know, do you still have them? Oh yeah, absolutely. really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're in a, a safe deposit box. <laughs> um, going back into the is as early as uh, 1996 when I started working as an adult um, traveling around the world and, and you know so many thoughts coming into your head at such an expedient manner and, and um, trying to process all of that it was uh, really cool to see how you took information and experienced it and how it came back out of you um, and the words that you used to describe it and sort of the emotional content that it, that, that it has is really cool to be able to go back and see that because then you start to be able to piece together how you like your decision making who you process are. who yeah. you are I wish I had one Paul, <laughs> Nina, Nina you ever done that any, I, I kept journals uh, I will no I actually started with Dear Diary at the beginning <laughs> so I guess I kept diaries for a while and then I would go I'd start and then I'd stop because things would get crazy I wish I'd been more consistent though because it, it'd be interesting to go back and, and read it because when I have gone back and read things it, things that were so important at the time and so kind of the, the, I lost sleep over right now and I read them back I'm like really? <laughs> you were that hung up on that guy? <laughs> but he was such ugh and like it's, it's funny it's my I would unfortunately write down thoughts as a way of therapy I think when I was younger but then I'd be embarrassed about it so I would uh, then read it and be like, who am I kidding, and rip it up. And really? God, that nobody would see it. So I'd have these pages that I would then rip up because I was too embarrassed in front of myself, uh, which is, of course, at the time, an absurd thing. Uh, and now as an adult, I write all the time just to sort of get things out. You know, it's what you do. But um, I don't have anything to go back and look at, um, which is a shame. But, um, you know, it's what made me who I am. Like photos. <laughs> <laughs>